So yeah. let's get this one underway. So let's go. Sean, why don't you do the honors? Why don't you go ahead and uh, it basically introduce our players? Michael Don Lamont, I'd be happy to. Up in the top right corner from Asus Rog, it will be. Or, excuse me, in the top right corner. <laughs> As purple, not from Asus Rog, from Team My Revenge, it is Cupcake. And down in the bottom left from Asus Rog, it will be. Elfie Taya is the red Protoss piece is currently up 1 and 0 oh after a healthily executed four game. Now, I just have to say, Elfie not only got to be feeling good because he has the momentum from that first match, but also, I mean, we mentioned this time and time again, but it always comes into play when you're watching Elfie in a tournament, is that he's currently finding himself in a PvP. There's also a chance that he can go to the finals of this qualifying round if he manages to advance right here in another PvP, just riding that PvP wave all the way to the finals here. Once again, got to be dropping down that pylon right next to the Nexus, and we do see the Corona Boost being dumped into those probes, so nothing too yeah. cheesy going on here. And you know, I, I like what you were talking about earlier, where Elfie just says he has so much confidence in PvP, finds himself in one here, very likely is going to find himself in another one in the final if Real ends up pulling through. And honestly, I feel like, especially with a 4-gate in a PvP, it's like going up and introducing yourself to a beautiful woman. It's all about confidence, okay. Mike. Has nothing to do with how you look or smell. It's confidence, Mike. And that's something that really shows through with Elfie's play. He just does a 4-gate, against an extremely highly rated Protoss player. And even though it is the most standard seeming strategy, the fact that he does it so confidently, he makes no errors, gets those pylons down right on time, and just crushes down the front door. We do see again Elfie down on the bottom left building that second pylon so that it's within warp and range of the ramp. That's one of the most important second pylon placements there, as it also does support the gateway. And now around that 17 to 19 food mark is where the big deviations go down. Will a second geyser go down, a second gateway go down, or neither of those indicating aggression? Yeah, the Cybernex core is on the way for both players here. We do see Zealot first out of both players. And Sean, what do you think about Zealot first? Because some players do it and some players don't. If you go Zealot first, well, I, actually, I, should guess, I guess I should say that if you don't build a Zealot, you kind of have to get a second gateway up to get enough units to defend. If you go one gate, no first Zealot, your opponent can actually attack you with his first Zealot and two Stalkers and break your front. So it's a kind of an essential defensive tool that a lot of Protosses are making use of. Now the Warp Gate technology on the way for both players, no surprise, gonna be dumping those saved up Chronos into getting out that research because not only can you do that for timing attacks, you also need it to defend those same timing attacks. Down goes the second gas here for Elfie, and we already have the second gas established for Cupcake, and he has transferred Three probes up there. You know uh, I, both was? Guys. I was in the kitchen making dinner. Would you like me to bring your dinner in here? Maybe you'd like me to bring your dinner into your car. You can sit it on the front seat and you can have like a nice date with your car and like sitting in a grease puddle. Maybe you could just like eat your food right out of that. You could dip your bread in that. Would you like that? Do you ever do anything inside the house? Maybe in the last game. He is doing a very defensively structured build. He is getting the robo first. No way you're going to be attacking in the early game, but he does like to follow this up with very fast Colossus pushes with Warp Prism drop plays. Second uh, gateway going down, a defensive necessity when you're opening up with that uh, Warp Gate. But we're seeing uh, another sort of different style come out of Cupcake. It looks like he's going for three gate blink, and we don't even see a robo. Elfie dropping down the Twilight Council right now. Oh, interesting. And it looks like a Twilight Council as well for Cupcake, as you were mentioning here, Sean. So we should see similar builds here. Um, Sean, I'm guessing this Observer is just going to be for the Stalkers to blink onto the high ground, or is he? does he have some other plan for this Twilight Council? You know, generally players will be reversing that order a little bit, going for the Twilight Council first, and then for the Robo, as we're seeing Cupcake do. But oftentimes it's nice to be able to do this as Elfie to get such a fast Observer that you know exactly what your opponent's doing before you make the pullback. And also, if you get into some sort of emergency situation, you can build the early Immortal. Now the timing of it means he has to be very careful with this first Observer because by the time he gets to the base, that's going to be right around when his opponent's Observer is going to be spawning. We also do have Blink getting that Corona Boost dumped into it here. Is it for both players or just one? Yep, they both decide, hey, I want to get huh. that Blink as quickly as I possibly can. And it uh, does look like more gateways being added on here for Elfie. Going up to four. 
and that's why he can afford to produce off of one base with four gateways and a robo because he's not really going to be using that robo for much else. Now his observer here needs to be very careful because again, this observer is about to spawn and that could be dicey here if Cupcake is able to snipe this. It does look like though he will manage to sneak undetected to the back of the base. He sees the upgrade yep. there and he knows, as you mentioned, Sean, exactly what's going on. But you'll notice Elfie, even though he seemed to go for a little bit more of a defensive build, getting this earlier Robo, this earlier Observer to check things out and scout, he is getting his fourth gateway finish earlier. So this could actually spell disaster for Cupcake if he tries to go into the just Stalker battle. Cupcake will be forced to build an Immortal. And right now the Stalkers are in position here. The Observer is in position as well to be blinking into the main. And remember, Cupcake is completely out of defend, or position here to defend this. So if LV decides to strike right here, he will be able to take out a lot of probes. And up he goes. Is he Whoa, oh there no! Opponent, but Cupcake got me blinking down there as well. The probes are completely defenseless here. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a base trade situation. We're seeing my Cupcake already losing most of all of his workers. And meanwhile, back down in Elfie's base, we're seeing the same situation. Elfie, though, acting a little preemptively immediately doing that run away but I think honestly Cupcake's decision may have been a little bit of the better one leaving his probe mining for as long as possible to get that extra warp and round but now it's going to be an elimination race with the only building that's not inside Cupcake's base being the pylon that's down at the bottom left the, the main bases are going to get completely destroyed here so really the important thing right here while we wait for these bases to die is the army supply versus worker supply it's 27 army for Elfie, but he also has 11 additional probes to go and engage that army once the final battle actually happens. You gotta remember, there is a pylon in the center of the map for Cupcake. Same thing goes for Elfie here. And uh, at this point, it looks like, yes, Cupcake is gonna go straight for that pylon. He knows if he can snipe that pylon, he can safely fall back to try and kill off the main base. But at the same time, these armies are most likely going to have to engage each other here at some point. And also, right now, Elfie does have uh, 100 minerals, almost exactly, so he can build another pylon wherever he sees fit. He'll probably be waiting to build that assimilator. It's a much more beefy structure in those elimination races. He's kind of low on options of places he can build that one assimilator, to be honest. He's got to be really careful with this observer. It looks like he's gently trying to poke up, trying to see. It looks like Cupcake does want to go for a direct engagement. He's going to have to blink out for a big retreat. Oh, no, it looks like a lot of their units for both players are out of position. The three zealots for Cupcake up at the front. Both players doing a nice job of blinking. As we look at the health, we're seeing that on average, the stalker count is getting a little bit more in Elfie's favor. It's all going to come down to target firing. Both players doing a nice job of blinking back. But we're seeing, oh, oh Cupcake starting to get the edge. He has a few more orange stalkers, but Cupcake with a superior blink micro takes him down. Down. 